I don't know the person. I got the principal to get me the most promising fashion graduate for me to present this to her and to bless her. And what I want to leave behind for a talk of vocational is that I have always said that Ghana needs fever incubation centers. We need three. That was a promise I made before I exited. I started talking to people. I'm looking at one in the southern sector, one in the middle sector, and then one in the northern sector. And I think coming from this area, the southern sector will have the first one. I'm talking to people for us to build a TVET incubation center. And I promise you, we'll have a conversation like maybe it will come to our top of. They are the hearts and minds behind the tangible progress we see around us. And I always say this, and anywhere I go to, I always stress this. My young graduates, you are so blessed to be here. You've been here for three good years, am I right? Yes. More than three years. Now we're here for four, three years. You have applied so much skills. And I should tell you that you are the most richest guy and lady on this internet. Why do I say so? In your three years, four years journey over here, you have acquired so much skills. So much skills that should enrich you. So much skills that should put food on your table. So much skills that you need to impact to others. So how do you promise us? Even a skill can make you a rich person. I quite remember when I went to Faradobe and I introduced catering and hospitality. There was no tutor, but that was my speciality. So when I introduced it, I was no teacher, but I taught it myself. I had three students, and then anytime there is catering, I have to teach them in my office. And when it was practical time, I take them to my kitchen. And I want to tell you that the first practical skills that I taught the students was more than, I mean, millions of skills that you should learn. I taught them the, the skill of making pastries. And there was a student in the class. I had only three students when I started catering and hospitality. There was a student in the class who is coming from a very poor background. And that skill of pastry making, when she went home, she told the mother, by then it was fee paying. She was not able to pay her school fees. But that skill, that one skill alone, that she taught the mother. From then, they started making pastries for sale. And that's what was what she used to pay her school fees for the three years. That is just one skill. You have been here for so many years, three years, four years. The skill was the skill of welding and fabrication. You have acquired the skill of fashion. You have acquired the skill of what? Building and technology. I don't know what they are doing. You see here, you are doing textiles. Even one skill of making hot, batik making, is more than anything else. You don't have to wait for the government to employ you. No. You get some basic tools and you can produce batik, kai and dye, and whatever. 
That's one skill. As you stand on the threshold of a new chapter of your lives, I want to share a piece of advice grounded on life experience. As you pursue your goals, there will be challenges and setbacks. I have faced many myself, and I can tell you that failure is not the end, it is a stepping stone. Every failure teaches you something valuable, and each setback brings you closer to your goals. Don't be afraid to take risks, to step out of your comfort zone, and to fail. You need to fail. If you don't fail, you must succeed. Embrace those moments as opportunities for growth. The skills and knowledge you have gained through Tibet are invaluable. But the world of work and technology is always evolving. To stay ahead and remain competitive, it's important to continue building on what you have learned. Whether it's advancing your technical expertise, pursuing specialized certifications, or even considering higher education, furthering your education will open doors to new opportunities and possibilities and help you reach your full potential. Continues to thrive with expectations for increased enrollment. The success we celebrate today reflects the firm commitment of our 42 teaching and non-teaching staff who cultivate an environment conducive for both academic and personal development, personal growth. Togweche, ladies and gentlemen, at Atoko Technical Institute, we have made remarkable strides in recent years, and I'm proud to highlight some of our key accomplishments. One, certificate two examinations. During the recent June, July 2024, 210 of our candidates successfully completed their Certificate two examinations, reflecting the dedication of both students and staff. Two, land acquisition for expansion. We have acquired a piece of land for a temporary pavilion to ease classroom overcrowding, providing a better learning environment. Three, temporary kitchen and dining hall. Our building construction department has constructed a temporary kitchen and dining hall, offering practical experience to students while addressing boarding needs. Five, virtual project and accreditation. Currently, we are running a virtual project for informal apprentices in welding and garment making and have secured accreditation in textiles catering and building construction under the Ghana Jobs and Skills Apprenticeship Project, demonstrating our commitment to skills development.